Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to be doing our 7.19 tier list for League of Legends. I'm the Strategy Professor. If you didn't catch my uh, patch notes analysis, be sure to check that out. I'm just going to release these at about the same time. I just want to split them up into two smaller videos here. I'm really trying to get them to about an hour or so each. I'm going to try to do this one much faster. Um, <clears throat> so let's go and get to it. If you didn't check that out, I'll leave a link somewhere uh, up near the top with it and I'll also link it in the description if you want to see that and then also uh, if you want to access this Google Doc that'll be in the description as well as well as timestamps to the different champions so you can find out which one you want to hear about the most okay so let's go ahead and get in here let's I'm going to aim to do this in 20 minutes we'll see I know that's going to be like impossible for this channel but we'll we'll see if I can do it just because I put so much analysis and everything okay let's talk about Rakan so the big shifts here so there are two shifts in this meta that were that I talked about in the patch notes video, and they're not like massive, super meta changing. They're like meta cracking. Like it leaves a little bit of space for other stuff in the meta. Um, the big one is to Janna. Obviously, I talked about how she got nerfed, and don't mistake it is a nerf. It is a massive nerf to Janna, especially the two hot fixes <clears throat> at the top. So they just like nerfed her three times, and these two hot fixes are really really brutal especially this one this eye of the storm like shield nerf and this is just massive so i talked about that a lot i'm not gonna talk about that again that was in the last video but massive massive nerf okay Jana, major hits okay the other one that changed is ardent sensor so it was a nerf to ardent sensor people have said it's a buff it is a nerf and the reason is that basically takes away um, you know, somewhere around the equivalent of 15% lifesteal on AD carries, and it makes it a lot more risky for them to cheat by not getting, they're not cheating, but it allows them to skip, it had allowed them for the past few patches to skip a lifesteal item and just go straight for the triple crit, right? Infinity Edge, Rapid Fire, Cannon, Static Shiv on most AD carries, and you would still get enough lifesteal to make it through Warlord's Bloodlust and through, um... Ardent Sensor, and then early game Doran Shield if you needed it. So it made it really difficult to punish these champions, even though they had no lifesteal <clears throat> in their item, itemization. So that all has changed. So what does that mean for support? Okay, well, number one, anything that pokes is going to be a lot better um, in lane and in the mid game because there's not going to be that lifesteal. I don't think AD carries are all of a sudden going to go back to everyone builds Borg or everyone, you know, a lot of them start rushing like bloodthirst or second item or start rushing like death stamp second item or something like that i don't think that's going to happen i think people are still going to build the same builds and so that allows you to exploit them a lot more if they don't have a healer <clears throat> in the mid game so this increases the stock of healers so sona and soraka specifically are going to be a little bit better here because if you have a heal to go with that ardent sensor you're using a heal instead of a shield to proc it <clears throat> that's going to be a lot stronger so there's that. Um, and then Janna herself opens up a space for someone else to be a premier peeler or team fighter. So that's another thing that Janna was squeezing out. And she was squeezing out a lot of early game aggression. And she was squeezing out a lot of um, other team fight supports. So some of the biggest beneficiaries here are going to be uh, Tarek finds a space as a team fighter. And Sona. I mean, both of these like changes that I've talked about, Sona. Sona, Sona, Sona. So <clears throat> Sona is very good against Janna early on. So if they pick Janna, Sona will crush her. And she's going to scale much harder than she does later in the game now. Uh, Sona doesn't care that Ardent Sensor doesn't have the healing as much because she has healing. Um, so both of those are very good for Sona. Um, and then it opens up a space for Rakan too. Because Janna was very good against Rakan. Because if he engaged, she could just blow him back or tornado him out of it. Or whatever. Janna was one of the best... Um, champions against Rakan and Rakan <clears throat> was one of the top supports and he, now that that's why I make him the top support right now um uh, so overall I think those are the two things to consider so why is Rakan number one okay well first of all engaged champions are very important right now because a lot of the best AD carries are immobile AD carries so AD carries that <clears throat> don't have very good dashes so not Ezreal not Lucian not Vayne all right so Trist does have a jump that she can get away on, but it's somewhat delayed. So Trist is probably the most mobile of the bunch, but I would say she's going to go down a little bit in value 
<clears throat> as I talked about there in the last patch, because I think Caitlyn's going to do her job better. She's going to have more utility, better sieging, better wave clear uh, than Tristana does in a lot of cases. So I don't think Tristana's going to completely disappear. I just think that Caitlyn's going to squeeze her out a little bit. And so that's another um, immobile AD carry is going to get squeezed out. So <clears throat> that makes it really a lot easier for Rakan to uh, land his R plus W on people. So that's number one. Uh, yeah, Janna's gone. A lot of these for RW. Another thing is Zaya, I believe, is the best AD carry right now. Um, and a big reason for that is that she has really good wave clear, really good sustained damage, and really good burst damage, and team fight, and crowd control. And she's relatively safe with if her ultimate's up. So she just has so many good qualities right now. And Rakan is one of the better supports in the abstract, and she's very good with Rakan. And Zaya is one of the best AD carries in the abstract, and she's very good with Rakan. And so both of them are good with each other and both of them independent of each other are good in their roles and they amplify each other's power. So the fact that they're both good is why I put both of them at the top tier because the Zaya Rakan combo is by far the best bot lane you could run right now. Um, so that just make, that's just really good. And Rakan in general is very, they also buffed Zeke's on this patch uh, by quite a significant margin. And that's a very good item on Rakan. He's probably the best Zeke's user because he likes all the stats. He likes this cooldown reduction. He likes the tankiness. And he likes being able to buff up your AD carry while he holds everyone still for them to blow him up. So Rakan is a person who, one of the few supports who can legit go Ardent Sensor plus Zeke's and just buff the Daylights out of your AD carry for the double buff. Okay. I think uh, another one who could go that in theory would be someone like Blitzcrank. Uh, Thresh could go that, so... You know, three of the top four champions can go for that one-two punch. And I think that'll be a pretty powerful one-two punch if you don't have to get um, Locket or you choose not to get Redemption and stuff like that. He can also go Redemption. I mean, he can go almost anything. That's why Rakan's really good is he can go Locket. He can go Redemption. He can go Zeke's. He can go um, Righteous Glory, although that just got um, the cost nerfed a little bit. So I don't know if you'll ever go that on him anymore. But there are a lot of different things that you can go with him. Ardent Sensor... Uh, I mean, you could even go for something like a uh, <clears throat> Athena's Unholy Grail if you really wanted to, if you wanted some extra healing and uh, damage. So he's probably has the most versatile build path of anyone. It's like right up there with Thresh in terms of versatility. So yeah, he's just really good. He's good in a lot of situations. He's good if you're ahead bot lane, you can engage and just keep beating him up. He's good if you're behind bot lane because you can just go roam and make plays around mid lane. Uh, he's extremely safe. That's another thing that separates him from Thresh is if you're trying to go ward somewhere and all of a sudden their jungler shows up or someone's just trying to come get you, just whatever, W over a wall. You know, he is the safest roamer right now. Roamer and warder. <clears throat> because he can just basically, it's not quite a flash, but it's pretty close. Just flash over any wall. And you level that first and it gets a pretty low cooldown. He has decent wave clear too um, after you get kills. So it's not safe wave clear, but it's decent with your W. You can just W a wave, and it makes it a lot easier for your AD carry to go up and clean that up. It's just obviously it's dangerous if you're going to get ganked and you expose yourself. So you don't want to do that too much, but it is on the table. If you need some really quick wave clear after a kill, then he can definitely do that. So I think all of those combine to make him uh, number one. Now, he is kind of tricky to play. They did, you know, nerf him a couple of patches ago. And the only thing that's significant about that is the collision range on your um, R is a little bit less, and that's noticeable. In fights but it's still pretty easy to hit single targets which is what you're going to do most of the time with him it is a little bit harder to hit multi-targets but you can and you can still run around and tag multiple targets after that if you want um but i think that overall that's good and that was compensated by a lower cooldown on your ultimate last patch which is excellent because now you can run around and make even more plays so uh i think overall he's the best now Sona is another one who is extremely powerful right now. She was already arguably the best support last patch, depending on who you asked, especially because Janna was banned all the time. Um, if a, if, te if your team is based on team fights and it goes for the fight lasts longer than five, like maybe five to ten seconds, if she gets off two or three Ws, the fight's over. You're going to win. It's almost impossible to kill through her healing and shielding because um, Executioners and Morella Namicon and Thornmail... All that doesn't help that much against Sona. It's okay. It does stop part of the healing portion, but it doesn't stop the shielding portion. Um, and so she's only, you know, half of her healing and shielding is cut through that. 
And then it also gives a lot of buffs to your teams too. Like you can spank down Baron really quickly because you give everybody the Ardent Sensor buff. You give everybody the buff off of your Q, which adds a lot of extra on-hit damage. And all of that scales off of AP. So if you look at Sona, just her scaling is absolutely through the roof. Especially if you go Ardent Sensor into Athenes, you get a lot of AP off of that. You're going to get somewhere around... 175 AP, even with runes. Um, and so that's just, that's a lot. And, you know, your Q has a 1.0 ratio, really a 1.2, because you're going to hit two targets for 50% ratio. And then um, each person that you tag gets an additional 0.2 off of that. So if you tag three people with this, then it's 160% uh, AP ratio in a fight. And it's on a 4.8 cooldown. So she scales harder than any support with AP, and AP is so easy to get right now with Ardent Sensor and a Themes combo. Just really, really strong. Then her heal hits two targets, so that's 50% of it. And then two additional targets for 30% uh, of it. So that's up to, that's a minimum of a 1.1. And if you hit three targets again in a team fight with this portion, then it's going to be a 1.4 ratio. Let's see, 3, 150, yeah. Um... So yeah, this is like a 150 ratio in a normal, like you tag three people with it in a team fight. This was, you know, 160 uh, ratio, 1.6. Those are insane ratios for a support. And then of course her ultimate is on a pretty low cooldown. It lowers the cooldown of all of her other stuff. And it has a nice one and a half second stun area of effect. So she's excellent at chaining together crowd control to secure kills. So she's just really, really good. If they leave you alone and don't kill you in your Sona, you just take over the game by yourself. Like, the only way they're going to beat it is if they, like, assassinate and blow somebody up in under five seconds, either you or somebody else. Um, now, if your team doesn't group up, if everyone's running around doing random stuff, that could be a problem. And if you're completely getting hosed bot lane for some reason, that can be a problem because she doesn't roam very well. But it's really hard to lose bot because you just have so much fighting potential early on. But it can happen if they have hard engage, like, thrash, blitz... Leona, stuff like that. Leona got a lot better this patch. I've been seeing a lot of her. I still think she has problems in higher ELO, but Janna was her main arch nemesis, and she's out of the picture. And Tom Kinch is really good against her, but he's not great overall in the meta. And so... I think that Leona's better too. So Sona's very good if they don't grab her and kill her. If she doesn't get assassinated, she's extremely good. But she can get assassinated a lot easier than someone like Rakan and Thresh because she doesn't have the same mobility or peeling potential that they have. Okay, uh, Thresh is another one that I have boosted up quite a bit, and the reason for this is now that Janna is kind of out of the picture in terms of <clears throat> best blind pick, you need another blind pick to take that slot. And I think Thresh... Either Thresh or Rakan are going to be the best blind picks, I think. And Thresh is that way because... Um, he can peel and he can engage. So if your team lacks engage, he can fulfill that role. If they have a lot of assassins and engage and you have a squishy, like, immobile AD carry, you know, like a Twitch, then he can also peel for that. So he can go aggressive with, like, a Draven in lane. He can peel for a Twitch in lane. Uh, Caitlyn is an excellent combo with Thresh. Um, when you pull someone, she can drop a trap right on top of them. That's almost certainly going to be a kill. Um, good combo with Callista. You can throw Thresh in there, then he can ult. The start fights. He just has good synergy with pretty much everybody out there. Um, you hook somebody, and then Zaya can set up her feathers and stun him. So there are just so many good combinations right now with Thresh. And he can actually go um, Ardent Sensor as well. Now, that's a little questionable. Because you're going to be squishy if you do that. So it just depends. You can't always do that. But if you have a high-scaling AD carry who's doing well... And that is on the table. You do have a 0.5 there. You have a 0.4 here um, and a 1.0 there. So it's not amazing AP scaling, but it is something. And so <clears throat> having that extra little bit of art, you would, of course, go Bond of Stone if you go Ardent Sensor so that when you hook somebody, everyone on your team would benefit from it. So they did nerf Ardent, so it's not as amazing. Although getting extra attack speed on Thresh is not terrible. You do get on-hit damage. Um, and he does do extra damage with his E on hit. Uh, so, it's not bad. Um, so it's the Collected Souls. 
So you get, if you have 50 souls, that's 50 on hit damage, and then Ardent Sensor give you 75 extra on hit damage, and you can just keep attacking people with that extra. So he's pretty, like, he's pretty decent with that new Ardent Sensor mechanic. Um, for the on hit. So, I think, I think that makes Thresh really good. So you can go Ardent Sensor on him, you can also just go the more traditional, like, Locket and Knight's Vow type of build. Um, Redemption, you know, you can, he's very versatile, just like Rakan. So, and a lot of that is because he doesn't have to go in. You can't just land the hook and use your flay for peel. You don't have to actually follow up and put yourself in harm's way to use him. Um, Blitzcrank is another one who I think has risen a lot in value. And the reason is, once again, he counters all these squishy champions. Another good... And here's the thing. Like, you need an answer to 80 carries right now. That's, that's one of the biggest knocks against someone like Sona, is it can be hard to kill someone... Like Zaya, Kate, Twitch, Draven, Callista. AD carry, I think, is the most important role right now. Um, so whoever has the highest scaling AD carry is probably going to win. Um, and yeah, it, so if your team picks something like a Lucian and they have a Twitch, you're going to be in a really, really bad place um, if you can't figure out a way to get to that Twitch and kill him. And so Sona can do it with her ult. It's just a little bit harder. Um, Thresh can land hooks, though, to start fights, so they're not even fights. It is a little bit harder with Thresh to land those hooks. It's not as guaranteed as Rakan, but he does have more peel and more utility. He keeps his team safer with the Lantern than uh, Rakan does. So, <clears throat> he's very versatile, classically, a really versatile, great champion, and I think that he gets a lot better here because Janna is a lot weaker, and so that opens up a space for him to be uh, kind of a premier, uh, really early pick when you don't know much about the enemy comp. Before, there was just no reason to pick anything other than Janna first pick. But now, um, you know, there's, there's a greater space opened. Okay, Blitzcrank is another one that I think is going to rise here. Blitzcrank is good to Jan against Janna, so that didn't change that much. Um, Janna's one of the better enchanters against Blitz because she could reset at least a little bit. Uh, but one of the real stories here is... Once again, you need to be able to get on these 80 carries to deal with them. Um, and also, if your 80 carry fails bot lane, you need to be able to snowball other lanes because you just can't sit there and let the enemy just outscale you and out snowball you bot lane. You have to do something to try to stop that bleeding. So that's something that I've kind of learned lately is you can't just chill when their 80 carry is getting really, really far ahead. So, like, if your AD carry dies twice bot lane, you can't just sit there and just let that happen anymore. And sometimes you can't fight them either. If you're playing a champion, they can't fight them. So Blitz can fight them, but if you're really far behind also, you can just roam middle. And people are playing squishier, immobile stuff middle. Not always, but more often. Like, you're going to see some Azirs. You might see some Talias. Um, I've seen TFs. There are a lot of times you can just roam around with Blitz, just grab your Moby Boots, <clears throat> ward up the river and just run around and just make picks around the map and he can run up late game and pick off some of these squishy champions especially because tanks are falling out of favor a little bit right like there's still going to be some tanks but i pointed out several tank games in my match history that did not have a tank like this game there's not really a actually there was a ramus in there but you're not seeing like double and triple tank you're seeing like maybe one tank per team per game like this game didn't even really have a tank other than braum so, like, anyone on their team would have been a good target for this. And so, this one, once again, like, no tanks on our team. They only had one tank on their team. So, there are lots and lots of good candidates for um, pulls right now because people are starting to fade away from the tanks a little bit. So, I think all of this helps Blitz out. Blitz, once again, can go Ardent Sensor if you want to. He can go Zeke's. That's a very, very good item on him um, because he has such a low cooldown ultimate. So, Zeke's is very good. The buff's going to help him with that. Um, obviously he likes the flat mana a lot. Um, he just likes everything about Zeke's. Makes him tanky. Um, he also likes Ardent Sensor, so you can go Ardent Sensor with him. Uh, he has really nice AP ratios. People forget this about Blitz because you don't usually build AP on him because it's kind of goofy. But he has really, really good ratios. So that extra AP actually converts to a lot of damage off of Ardent. And you get the extra move speed. You get that extra 8% movement speed. So yeah, the plus healing and shielding is wasted, but who cares? It's like 355 gold of the stats. So this just ensures that when you pull somebody and people hit them, they're going to get a lot of extra um, attack damage and or attack speed and on-hit damage and all that stuff. So when you pull one person and the rest of the team tries to follow up, you're already going to have that buff ready to go um, for the rest of the team. So yeah, he has a 1.0 ratio here. 
and he has a 1.0 ratio here. So pretty nice, extra burst damage off of that. And the thing about Bliss is you don't need special items because you're not running in and like taking a lot of hits, like a traditional tank, right? Like you don't need um, Locket or, uh, you know, Thorn Mail or anything like that. You can get those if you want, but he can be played like a utility champion to some extent where you just run up, hook somebody you miss, okay, whatever, reset. Like the most important stats to him, as long as he's getting cooldown reduction um, and preferably a little bit of mana, then he's good to go. So you just, and speed. So he wants speed, cooldown reduction, mana. Run around, throw hooks. Ardent Sensor gives you mana. Um, not a lot, but it gives you 50% reduction. It gives you the speed, extra 8% movement speed. And it gives you the AP so that you have higher burst damage. And it gives you the cooldown reduction. And it gives you a nice team buff. So Ardent Sensor is like, you know, on the low, like a really, really good item for Blitzcrank that people just don't ever get that much on him. Now, people are getting uh, Zeke, uh, Zeke's a little bit more, and Zeke's is very good, as I just explained on him. Uh, he can also get a full value Knight's Vow. Um, so, like, Rakan and Thresh only give half value on the Knight's Vow. So you only get the 6% redirected, but with him, you can get the full value out of it. So that's another thing that could potentially be really, um, really useful. So I don't think you'll go Righteous Glory anymore. You can go Talisman if you want. You definitely want to go some kind of coin item, I think. I don't know. I mean, you can go um, Equinox if you want. That does help get you through the lane. Just depends on the matchup. But, you know, coins on the table as, as well if you want that. So, I think Blitz is really good. Obviously, you just get your Moby Boots, Wards, and that's pretty much all you need. You can take over a game. So, yeah. I mean, Blitz could deserve to be up here in this uh, Tier 1. I just think that he does have some counterplay. You know, I'm going to go ahead and put him up there. I'm going to put him up there. Because I do think that he probably deserves this spot. Because <clears throat> you need the playmaking supports. I think those are there. Rakan, Thrash, Blitz. Because if they get ahead, if you have a team in your 80 carries turkeying out, you know, you have to get in there and stop that. Like, not only just fight them bottom, but just rotate around the map and do something else. That's more important than ever. Like, in the past, you know, if it was, like, early game 80 carries that were, you know, whatever, like the Jin, the Varus meta, like, those were important, but those weren't as important as the jungler. And so if your jungler was doing well, you could still just kind of chill. But if your AD carry is failing, even if the other lanes are doing well, it's a code red. It is a big, big problem. Because the AD carry is the most important, powerful position right now. Most of the time. I mean, like, Cassidy and Talia, stuff like this, might be able to make a larger impact. than someone like a Zaya or a Kate or a Fed Twitch. Like, <clears throat> these kind of Fed champions. But it's not as likely, I don't think. So you need to be able to roam around and do stuff right now, I feel, is a big deal. Especially now that <clears throat> traditional tanks are becoming a little bit less common. They're still around, but... I feel like that changes the calculus up <clears throat> quite a bit. Okay, and then the tier two. Morgana is very powerful because she's good against everything right here, except for Sona. So she's really good against Rakan, Thresh, Blitz. She stops the crowd control. Um, she's another one who can get Ardent Sensor with Stoneborn Pack to use her Q to start fight. She's also pretty good with Zeke's because you want to get in close to use your ult to stick to people. Um, so it gives you a little bit of tankiness and it holds people in place so they, you can just burst them down. So she's a very good Ardent plus Zeke's user if you want to do that. You can also go Redemption if you want. So Morgana's a pretty good counter to these champions. Uh, Soraka's another one that's been cropping up a lot, who still is really powerful. The nerf to Bramble Vest will make her a little bit better. Um, but overall, I still think she just gets countered too hard by um, Executioners. And I feel that these engaged champions, the Thresh, Blitz, Rakan, I feel like all of those can just eat her up. <clears throat> when they get a hold of her and tanks were falling out of the meta you know she wants tanks and really nice form 5v5s and people just aren't doing that people are just running around the map they're starting to play the fighters the assassins type of things again um <clears throat> and so it just feels very chaotic at least my last couple of weeks in solo queue have felt that way especially since this patch dropped um so she's okay i just think the meta is kind of shifting away from her a little bit the changes to ardent do help her in some matchups like that helps her a lot against janna and uh, Lulu, <clears throat> because they don't get the healing off of Ardent anymore. But overall, I would just pick Sona virtually every time, if she was open. 
uh, if you had a choice between Sona and Soraka. And that's why Soraka is a little bit lower. So it's not that Soraka can't be good. I still think she can be. It's just she has bad matchups against uh, three of the top four champions. She's okay against Sona. Um, and Sona is just a good replacement for her. It's just a strictly an upgrade most of the time. And once again, a lot of that is because Sona contributes a lot of damage um, with her Q in team fights. She gives Art and Sensor to multiple people with her W, whereas Soraka can really only give it to one person at a time unless you overheal other people. Uh, she doesn't injure herself to heal. She actually heals herself when she heals other people and shields other people. And a lot of her W is shield in addition to heal. It's not just a heal, so she's a bit more diverse. So that's why I think Sona is... And she has just better crowd control with her ultimate. But Soraka can be really good if your team doesn't, if the enemy team doesn't get executioners. Okay, Lulu, pretty good. Um, she has a fairly rough matchup against Sona, uh, especially after the Ardent nerf. Um, she's okay. I just I I don't win with Lulu very much, honestly. And like, she has okay wave clears. She's just very dangerous. People are picking more mobile, like really deadly champions like Cassidy and Ramus um you know talia and people are, i've seen like so many more like rivens fioras like a lot of that kind of stuff top lane and that's just pretty rough for lulu so you know polymorph is good but i mean she's okay she's okay i just i just feel like there are better choices most of the time like, i would pick sona anytime just about if lulu's up like if you're scared of assassins um, and you want to play Lulu, I guess that's viable. Or, like, if you have a Cogmore on your team, maybe that's viable. But I feel like Thresh would be kind of your anti... It would be your best peeler over Lulu most of the time. But, anyways, I talked a lot about Janna. Um, I still think she deserves to be in the top 10. Like, if you want... If you have a really high-scaling comp and you're against kind of a pushover lane early on, like, maybe you're against a, a Morgana or you're against a Soraka or something like that, you could maybe get away with Janna, but... You're gonna get spanked early, and you're not gonna scale nearly as well as you used to into the <clears throat> into the future. So, Sona, I don't know and if they have like Riven, Master Yi, and like Diana or something. Then like Janna's gonna be really good at repelling all those assassins. But unless they have like at least two major melee threats that you need to peel with your ultimate, I would probably just play you know some other kind of champion. Um. Zyra, I still think Zyra is okay. The fact that you lost a lot of the poke or a lot of the healing with Ardent Sensor makes Zyra a little bit more um, valuable. If you need AP damage on your team, she's probably your best AP threat. If like everyone picks AD, you have like a 480 comp, then Zyra is still probably pretty good. Brand can be okay too. So if you really, really need an AP champ, then you can go with Zyra. But the problem with Zyra is it's just not really reliable engage and it's a really long cooldown because she doesn't get a lot of cdr in her build um so you can't really engage that well with your e you're more of a peeler and i think you really need engage champions right now just in case the ad carry gets too far ahead the enemy ad carry so you know if they have a 5-0 twitch then it can be really hard to hit him with the e whereas like with blitzcrank or Rakan, Rakan in particular, but also Blitz or Thresh is gonna—they're gonna have a much easier time like getting on that person and dealing with them potentially. So she's okay. I, I still don't think AP champs are in, in an amazing spot right now, but they're all right. Um, <clears throat> and then Tarek, I boosted up a lot. I still don't highly recommend picking Tarek in a lot of situations because he has to be too close. He's too melee oriented. Um, there's too much outplay potential against his E. But I think that in general. Um, He's in the best place he has been in a while because now Janna has fallen quite a lot. So if you need someone against these assassins that are rising <clears throat> who has lots of shields and heals and Sona's banned, or you're just afraid that they're going to assassinate you if you play Sona, um, then Tarek could be a decent choice. But I still think a lot of the time he's just way too dangerous. He can get picked off. He has no escapes. And there's just too much counterplay to him at higher levels. But I still think he can be strong. If you're too scared to play Sona or Sona is banned, um, he's sort of your good tanky enchanter that is pretty good at team fights. So unlike like Blitz, Thresh, and Rakan, you know he's I don't know he's going to have more healing and shielding in team fights, but he's going to have a lot less reliable engage. And I think engage is where you want to be. Like basically, you either want to play Sona or you want to play hard engage. 
those are pretty much your options in this meta, I think. Um, or Morgana to counter their hard engage. <clears throat> it's one of those two, and he just doesn't really fit that criteria too well. Um, Braum's another one, or uh, Alistar's another one who's pretty good. I just feel like he's strictly inferior to Rakan. If Rakan is banned, you can go Alistar. Alistar is going to be a bit tankier, so he's going to be harder to assassinate, but Rakan can get tank items. Like, you could, in theory, get a Zeke's early, or at least get, like, a Chain Vest early, or whatever it is that um, the Glacial Shroud, you could get that early if you needed to, and, like, Ninja Tabi. So Rakan can adjust to become more tanky if you want. But if you're really scared that they're going to have a ton of damage, you can have Alistar. The problem is Alistar is a lot more dangerous because he can't escape. Like, he can't W over walls like Rakan can W over walls is the, the core issue. So when you're going to ward, if you get caught, you're just going to get killed probably. Or you're at least going to have to pop your ult and flash. Um, so he does have really nice roams, especially pre-6. Because Rakan is not going to be able to roam as easily without his ultimate. So Alistar does have the WQ off of Moby Boots roaming. I think Blitz would do that better probably. But he's alright. Like he's he's just a, it's a step down and engage from uh, Rakan, Thresh, and Blitzcrank I think. He just doesn't quite have as much versatility. doesn't quite have as many um, viable itemization paths. He has to build, like, strictly tank. Like, he cannot get Ardent Sensor. I feel like most of the time he can't get Ardent Sensor. He can't get Redemption because he's he has to go in there. And there's no escape once he goes in. So he's going to get blown up. So he's pretty much priced into getting, like, Knight's Vow Locket. And that really limits his, um, his ability to adapt to different games and fit into different team comps. So he's okay. He's okay. Uh, similar thing with Braum. Um, he has to build pure tank. He doesn't have AP ratios, so Ardent's awful on him. Um, you know, the Zeke's changes do, do help him some. But he's okay. He peels. Like, he's pretty good against Zaya and Twitch because he can block Zaya's feathers so they don't get behind your team. Um, and then Twitch, he can block Twitch's multi-shot so that it doesn't hit your entire back line. So Braum is particularly good against two of the best uh, AD carries right now, but he just lacks engage. He has pretty good fighting potential, but he just has very, very low lane pressure, and I just think he's going to get outscaled. Like, if you run against Sona, you're in big trouble if you're Rakan or Braum, and you can't do a lot. Like, if Rakan engages on your team, I guess you can do something about that. If Blitz pulls somebody out of position, your shield's not going to help a ton. Um, so he's okay, like, he might deserve to be higher, like, maybe he should be at the end of tier 2 instead of Taric, but he's somewhere kind of in here, like, niche pick against, uh, specifically Zaya and Twitch. But you're just gonna get pounded if they have Callista or Caitlyn, it's just not gonna be enough, because you don't offer anything to stop their zone control. Callista, your shield, like, they can just wait until you, your shield drops and then just stack up their um, rend and blow you up eventually. So, Callista can just wait you out. And, um, Caitlyn, uh, doesn't ever have to really fight you. She just drops traps and will just kill your towers. So, you have to go onto her. And he's just not that great at that. So, he's he has a good matchup against a couple of the top 80 carries, but he has some pretty bad matchups against others. Uh, he's pretty bad against Triss. Triss can just blow him away whenever he shields. Um, and kill the rest of the team. But yeah, he's alright. Uh, Annie, I moved up here too. Annie's just good, reliable. Like, just point blank. Just click, boom. People get blown up if you need AP on your team. So she's a bit more reliable than uh, Zyra is at this point. Because once again, like... You're not necessarily looking for big AoE teamfight damage, which you kind of are, but... You're looking for an ability to kill a hyper-fed AD carry. Like, to get on that back line and blow him up. And so, Annie has that. She can flash Tibbers <clears throat> and evaporate an AD carry. Okay, unless they get magic-resist items, which very few of them are going to do it. And that's going to delay their build if they have to do that. So, if the, you know, support has Locket and they're really fast, they might be able to shield some of that. But, you know, if they're going the standard Ardent Sensor into Redemption type of thing on a um, on an Enchanter support, it's going to be a problem. So you do have an early, like, you have a problem early game if people hook you or fight you early. So, you know, Annie's not going to be amazing into things like, um, uh, Rakan, Thresh, Blitzcrank early. Or Sona, but once you get level 6, you have a lot of threat. You can also roam around really easily and try to make plays mid lane. So, she's one of the better AP supports, um, because she has that point click, like, massive stun that has such great utility later in the game. 
but still AP supports are kind of problematic. So if your team has four ADs and you just need that point click to lock someone down, <clears throat> then she could be a decent choice over Zyra. Although Zyra is going to have much more lane pressure and much more sustained damage in a team fight. And he's going to have much more sort of point click, boom, crowd control, burst damage. Post six. Brand's okay. Uh, I mean, he has a lot of good pressure in lane early. If you get ahead, you can snowball with him. I think he's really strong in silver and bronze, but outside of that, people can outplay you quite a bit, and if you fall behind, it just feels really bad. So, I mean, Brand's okay if you have a good team fight team. I mean, he's excellent combination with uh, tanks like Malachi or Jarvan, just things that can hold an enemy team in place and just let your ult bounce around. So if you need, if you have a team fight team and you just need that area of effect, like just blow everybody up, ultimate, then that can be pretty strong. But he offers, he does offer a like okay peel with like his EQ and then W, but uh, there's a lot of outplay potential. Okay, Tom Kinch, decent champion, kind of similar to Braum. Like he he just he doesn't really fight that well. And team, like he doesn't have engage. You can ultimate behind people, but it's really risky in a lot of circumstances. And Tom Kinch is really best in a meta that's defined by crowd control. So a meta where you have um, you know, Malzahar mid lane, or Ash bottom, or Varus bottom, or, um, you know, Morgana or Leona. So, like, he's a decent counterpick to Morg if they pick Morg, or he's a decent counterpick to, like, Leona, Ash, stuff like that. But itemization is still just too bad on him, I think. And you just, you're not going to have enough agency to roam around and make plays, I don't think. I mean, maybe you could roam around with his ult and try to make some plays middle depending on who they have middle, but he's okay. I just feel like it's hard for him right now. Nami, uh, she's just not as good as Sona. That's the problem. Nami does get a little bit better without um, Janna in the picture, but if Sona's banned, maybe you could go Nami. I mean, having the E to stick to people is good, so it's really good with, like, Vayne. Really good with Ezreal, because that applies to on-hit E as well. Um... And Bubble and the ult are okay, but she just doesn't have enough ability, doesn't have enough scaling. Her ultimate, or her uh, W, has like a 10 second cooldown base, which is really high compared to someone like Sona or Soraka. Um, so she's okay. She just doesn't bring enough to the table, I don't think, right now. She's she's alright. Belka's another one. Good tank breaker, but you have to channel your ult. He's okay. Tanks are kind of falling out a little bit, and... I mean, Poke is better, like I said, because Ardent Sensor fell out of the meta. Or not fell out of the meta, but it lost its on-hit uh, healing. So, Vel'Koz is okay. But, you know, there are probably going to be better options most of the time. Fiddlesticks has a niche role where he has a nice point-click crowd control, and he also does ability power damage. So, if Assassins start coming back, if you start seeing more Akalis, Kassadins, um, Yasuo, Zeds, things like that, um, then fiddle six can be a bit better because you just point click Q fears them. And then you have a uh, really high um, burst damage with your ultimate. If you get that off, he can get ardent sensor. It's actually pretty good. Cause it gives you a lot of extra healing um, on your W and you're not giving up that much. Like he does so much excessive damage that you don't need the penetration. It's nice. But most of what he is, is he's just a crowd control bot. You just walk up and fear people most of the time. And so having that extra move speed, having that extra cooldown reduction, mana, he has really high AP ratio, so Ardent works. So, And he doesn't really synergize that well with Thunderlords or Deathfire Touch. They're okay on him, but they're not integral to his kit. And so he can go Stoneborn. Um, then when you queue somebody, get the Ardent Sensor buff. So that is something that's decent if they have uh, Assassins on their team. And Janna was really good against him. Uh, she was the primary like support that could shut him down because she can obviously... like blowing back with her ult whenever he ults so since she's fallen out of the metal a bit assassins are starting to come back fiddle has a nice spot i mean he may deserve to be higher as high as number three in the tier three list um just above annie but he's very very niche so it just depends so i, I would play him in some circumstances and then trundle decent tank breaker but he is he has some problems It's not good itemization on him. He doesn't. He can't really build Ardent Sensor that well. It's just the better stuff than Trundle most of the time. Uh, and then, like, finally, I'm not going to talk about these all the time, but Bard's really good if you're good with him. He's just very niche. I mean, Bard could probably be in here instead of Trundle. 
you know, maybe somewhere in this mix. Uh, he's all right. Karma is okay, but Karma does get a bit better since jana has gone, but I think that Sona and Lulu are just far better in Soraka than Karma is in this meta. Um, yeah, they just, they nerfed her shield too much. And then, like, with Doran's shield, it's just really hard to stick damage in the early game against her, and Sona can heal through it if they have Sona, so... Uh, yeah, Karma's okay. I just feel like they're going to be better better choices most of the time. And then, um, yeah, these other ones are okay too, but I'm not, I'm not going to go through all of them. I don't want to make this video too, too long. Okay, good. We got about 40 minutes. All right, so that's going to be it. Thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time. Have a good day.